Hello everyone! For today, for your physio led Pilates session, I'm going to need you to grab a pair of shoes, random, add them props, add then a very, very, very light bit of weight, well, depending on the size and the heaviness of your shoes. Um, they're going to be not only for hand width, but for your feet as well. So get um, get a recent pair of shoes that are also going to be able to fit you when we come on to the lower leg exercises. Let's come on to our mat first. Now, to teach standing posture today, for the purpose of our first exercise, I'm going to teach this um, standing to the side, but you guys can all face me. So for our standing posture, make sure you have your shoes in hand. I'll give you a few minutes to get those, um, get some shoes gathered up and get your music on, your mat and a small head cushion. All right, and we'll get ready to start. So with your shoes standing by your side, let's come in for our rest posture. So have your feet, that hip width apart. So you'll now all be able to gauge now how far apart that means for your feet since this is your third video. Let's bring our attention into the width distribution of our feet. So if you think about what your footprint in a wet bit of sand would look like, so you can see all five of the toes evenly spread, of course, so an equal amount of weight going through the big toe, but also your pinky toe, your fifth toe on the outside as well. There's never an arch, isn't there not? There's, there's always this gap in the middle and um, in the inside of the foot. So it's that lift up and away of the arches from your mat this morning. And soften your knees. Pelvis grounding at the bottom are three stacked up shelves. Tightening in your lower abdominal muscles. Pulling up of the pelvic floors if you want to stop yourself from going to the toilet. Ribs. I think it's quite good to show the rib flaring inside position here so you can see what I mean by that ribs going heavy. So some of us, me especially, anybody that has lordosis, which basically just means an overarch of your back, that could be from tight quadriceps muscles, weak abdominals, if you've got a job that you're overworking your back quite a lot, you'll tend to stand with this rib flare. So like I'm always saying, it's about that heaviness of the ribs connecting the spring that attaches your rib bone um, to your pelvic bone, the top of where your, your hip crest is. Collarbones wide, so it's a squeeze back of the shoulder blades as the ribs come down. And in that beautiful neck posture, chin is tucked in towards the neck and your neck's up nice and tall. For our first exercise, take a grab of your shoes just so that your hands are bounced up in the middle of the shoe. And I want you to connect the shoes at your back, like so, for your first exercise. And your hands are going to be rested just down at your buttock crease here. Set those shoulder blades back. Come into that stand-up position. Squeeze bum, soften knees, shoulder blades squeeze back, neck up nice and tall. Inhale. On your exhale, with your elbows straight, I want you to float your arms away from your body into shoulder extension. And most of us should have between... 45 to 60 degrees of movement back this way and we tend never to have our arms back here not unless you're a swimmer will you ever have your arms back here so it's really really important to exercise into those ranges of movement that you never really get to explore on a day-to-day -day basis here we go off for our warm-up exercises inhale exhale lift the arms away squeeze back of the shoulder blades inhale when you're up there exhale the lower down off we go inhale exhale floating away Make sure you're keeping all of those postural tips perfect. The squeeze back of the shoulder blades, that tightening of the tummy and the lower abdominal muscles, soft knees, weight spread evenly through the feet. I always have to really keep check of my neck posture here to stop this kind of thing from happening. Inhale, exhale to lift away. Hold when you're up there for an inhale. Your exhale. It's tough work. It's only the weight of your arms. Inhale. Exhale to lift. Inhale to hold. Exhale to lower. Inhale. A few more to go. Exhale to lift away. And then this in the lats and the triceps. Inhale. Exhale. So anytime you're seeing shaking happening, good. That's muscles working. Inhale. Exhale. Squeeze the shoulder blades. Inhale up there. Exhale, lower down. Last one, inhale. Fix posture, exhale. No forward tipping. Inhale. 
exhale to lower back down bring your hands closer together the shoes are still touching at the back fixed posture inhale here exhale we're going to slide those hands up the back squeeze back of the shoulder blades lift it as high as you possibly can inhale exhale the lower inhale exhale the lift Really getting those scapular retractors working, which basically just the muscles that pull your shoulder blades back. It discourages this kind of posture. Inhale. Exhale. Lifting up the back. Squeeze back of the shoulder blades. Inhale. Exhale. Lifts you up. But when you're up there, think postural cues. Ribs heavy. Neck up tall and tucked into the chest. Knees soft. Squeeze the bum and the pelvis. Lower back down. A few more to go. Inhale. Exhale to lift. Squeeze back of the shoulder blades. Lower back down. Last two. Inhale. Exhale. Woo! Shoulder blades getting it today. Last one. Inhale down there. And exhale to make this your highest lift yet. Inhale. And exhale. To lower back down. Alright. We're going to go in for a little bit of it's kind of them look like marching. Our arms are going to be going like so, holding on to your shoes. And the legs are going to be going back at the same time. So to begin with, we're going to step back with the left leg. Opposite arm, the right arm is going to come right the way up overhead. And when we step two again, arms swap over. You step back with the left. Woo! Hit the door behind me. That's good. Really, really working the shoulder blades here. I'm going to come a little bit closer. Working the shoulder blades here. Just like we did in those first two exercises, that squeeze back of the shoulder blades. If you want a little bit of a balance challenge today, lunge back further, take the knee up and through. <sighs> Inhale, exhale. Full range of movement of the shoulders, right up overhead, right down by the side, keeping the balance. Really, really good. Keep it going. Soon we're going to swap legs. Keep your elbows nice and straight too. How high can you lift your knee? How far can you lunge back? Last few on this leg and then we're going to change. Inhale. Exhale to power through. And last one. <laughs> See my balance going. This time we're going to step back with the right leg. Left hand is starting. So like I say, if the balance is a little bit too much, that second one, we're lifting the knee. Just bog standard marching like so. And if you're wanting that extra challenge, of course, lunge back further and bring the knee in. Good, off we go. I don't know if anybody notices much of a weight with the, the shoes, but, and of course, if you have hand weights and things at home as well that you want to use, just keep yourself safe. No injuries, please. <laughs> so I start off with uh, really light stuff. Would use soup cans or something, but um, you are gonna need the the shoes for the added weight to the legs anyway. So might as well use these. Last few. Hi, hi. Can you lift the knee? Good. Two and one. Arms down by the side. Lovely. Feet mm, just directly underneath your hip joints here. Whew. Getting warmed up in the morning. Okay, have a wee look at me. Go and lift the heel of the left foot. And we're going to change over. So you're kind of making it look like walking. Hips are staying nice and steady as we go. So don't want to see any whoo, whoo, sashaying as we go. So tiptoe. A change over up on the tiptoes. Lovely. Up and down. Nice and smooth. So you do have that moment when you're up there on both tippy toes. Arms come up to the side, holding your shoes. And with the arms, we're going to make circles. Let's make them football sized to start with. Get that squeeze back at the shoulder blades. That's it. Change the direction of your circles. Let's make them beach ball size, so a little bit bigger. I'm kind of trying to time the movement of my feet uh, with the movement of my arms. So it's every time I'm kind of scooting forward here, you'll see me change. It's just to keep you coordinated. <laughs> Some of us really struggle with the coordination, I know. Change direction again. This time we're going for 
tennis ball sized. So that's a smaller circle, takes less time. So we're speeding up with the feet a little bit. Yeah, really good. Set the shoulder blades back and down, neck up nice and tall, inhale. Exhale. Change direction again, huge big circles. Bigger than a beach ball. Really feeling the shoulder starting to warm up here. Good, keep it going. Set the shoulder blades back and down, neck up nice and tall. Keep the rib flare down, that tightening of the tummy muscles. Almost there, up here for small pulses and quick change of the feet. Last 10, nine, eight, keep it going. Good, six, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, rest the arms down. Give them a little roll, right shoulder, left shoulder, right shoulder, a few more. Woohoo! All right, we're gonna come on for lunges next, side to side lunges that is. So bring your feet fairly wide apart, a good bit wider apart than um, your hip stance position. I'm gonna go in for some lunges. So at the minute I'm bending at the right knee, to so lunge to the right, bending at the left. All right, we're gonna come onto this right side first. Pop this hand on your right knee. Left hand comes up and over. And windmill straight over to the opposite side. So you're seeing how far you can get down. Go down. Good stuff. That bend of the knee, side flex over. And that's a powerful push off of the bent knee to fire you off to the opposite side. Okay, on this next one down to the right, we're gonna come and have a pause. <sighs> Inhale down there. Exhale, lift this bottom hand to lift the top. <sighs> Powerful. Back to the center. Gonna to go to the left side. Bend the knee. Hand comes down, up overhead, down and pause. Inhale. Exhale, lift the bottom hand. Good, and off we go again, back to the right for our singles. Lovely. Really awakening the spine into side flexion here. Gonna go one more time with our pauses. The next time we come to the right. Down and pause, inhale here. Exhale, bottom hand, inhale. Down to the left, overhead, inhale here. Exhale, bottom hand, and back center. Lovely. From here, keep your feet where they are, they're nice and wide. Shoes come in to touch each other, inhale. And on our exhale, soften through your knees, flex the spine forward until your shoes come all the way down to touch the floor. And it's from here, pop your shoes off to the side. Just off to the side of your mat because you are gonna need them uh, very shortly. When we're right the way down, palms come on to the mat. So if you do need to bend, you are quite inflexible. Bend your knees slightly. Otherwise, have your knees out nice and straight for a great big stretch in the back body. <sighs> Inhale. On your exhale, bend your knees for me. Sit your upper body up straight, prayer position. Elbows out nice and straight. Pulse with me for five, four, three, two, one, palms back down onto the mat, straighten out of the knees. Bring the head forward so that you're looking right in between your legs. Inhale. Exhale. Back into prayer position again. Woo, hair. When am I ever going to get this haircut? I'm quarantined. <laughs> I'm taking the scissors to myself. Four, three, two, one. Palms down onto the mat, straighten out the knees. Woo. Feel the great big stretch down the back body. Bring your head closer towards your legs. Inhale. And exhale. We're going to go in for one more set of pulses. Inhale. Exhale to bend the knees. Keep the body up straight. Prayer position. Inhale. And pulse. Pulse. For five, four, three, two, and one. Back down onto the floor. Hands on the floor. Knees straight. Head comes in between the shoulders and stretch. Bring both hands off to your left foot. Inhale. Exhale, sweep the hands across. Both
both hands onto the right foot. Inhale. Exhale to come back centre. Bend at your knees and come into sitting for me. All right, we're going to go in for a thoracic rotation next. So if anybody's quite uncomfortable sitting long, you can sit with your knees bent up for this one if you like. Hands are up behind your head. That squeeze back of the shoulder blades, neck up nice and tall. So don't pull too much in your head. Your hands are just basically really lightly floating behind your head. Don't pull too much in your head here. Otherwise, your knees right nice and straight, toes pointed, sit up tall, shoulders stacked right up on top of hips. Inhale here. On your exhale, we're going to rotate to your left. Not going to be much movement here. I'm just seeing how far you can look over that left shoulder when you're there. Inhale. Exhale. Back centre. Fixed posture. Shoulders back and down. Don't pull too much in the head. Heads tucked back. That double chin exercise from before. Inhale. Exhale. Let's turn to the right. Staying up nice and tall. Don't let your upper half jackknife forward. Inhale. Exhale. Back centre. A few more to go. Inhale. Exhale to turn. To the left. See how far we can go. You really feel this in the thighs if your legs are straight. Inhale. Exhale. Back centre. Fix posture. Inhale here. Exhale to twist. To the left. To the right. Oh! See left and right. It is going up the left. Or maybe it's up the right. Inhale. Exhale. Twist into the left. Inhale here. Exhale, back centre. Last one. Inhale. Your exhale leads the movement. Twist around as far as you can. Squeeze that last bit of rotation out to look over that right shoulder. Inhale. Exhale. Come on back centre. And arms down by the side. Beautiful. Let's come on to our mat. We're going to go in for our bridges first. Actually, so you're not going to need your head cushion for this one. So pop your head cushion off to the side. And let's come down into our Pilates rest position. So, practice your little spinal roll down. Oh. To lower yourself onto your mat. So, your knees are bent up. About 90 degrees. Have a look down. Your feet and knees are about hip width apart. Arms down by your side. Shoulder blades fitting back like jigsaw pieces into your mat. It is so comfortable for me to want to lie with a big arch in my back. And like I say, so many of us with a lower dosis or just an increased arch in the back. We'll absolutely love lying like this, but of course for our bridges, um, that's where we're practicing that posterior pelvic tilt, basically strengthening the bum muscles, strengthening the glutes muscles. So the first thing that we're going to do here after setting the shoulder blades back is I'm also going to decrease that rib flare. So like I say, it's a push down through the ribs, tightening the tummy muscles so that all of my back is making contact with the floor. Pop your fingers on your hip bones for me. So just right where you can feel the hip bones are at themselves. I want you to imagine that at that bony prominence, there are headlights coming straight up out of your hip bones and they're hitting the roof. So we'll do that anterior pelvic tilt first and you'll imagine as you arch your back, so arch your back up completely for me, that is, that is going to tilt your headlights away. So now the headlights are pointing down towards your knees at the wall behind you. And as we flatten that curve of the back out, squeezing the bum, squeezing the tummy, take yourself back neutral, but then try to give yourself that extra squeeze of the bum as if you wanted to tilt the headlights up towards your eyes. Now, when you're up in that bridge position, that's what I want you to maintain that whole time is that posterior pelvic tilt. I'm not the very best at demonstrating it because that's homework of mine, something I'm constantly working on because of tight hip flexors and quads that I have, but that's what I want you to imagine because it's a constant pull of the tummy and squeeze of the bum muscles when we're up and you'll see why this is important because we're going to add an element into our standard shoulder bridge today. All right, sinking down through the feet, take your inhale and on your exhale, tilt those, pel those pelvic bones towards you, those headlights, squeeze your bum muscles, squeeze your tummy and lift right the way up into bridge position here. So there's a huge, huge squeeze of my bum and my tummy here to get these pelvic bones to face up towards me as much as I possibly can. Now for our bridge today, we're gonna to do a little bit of hip opening and closing. So we'll start with our hip open first, you inhale. Exhale, let the knees fall out. I will turn around to show you this um, from another angle. And then squeeze the knees together. So we're gonna be going in for five repetitions of this, but the entire time that your knees are opening and closing, I want you to stay up in that strong, tall bridge and don't be letting your bridge sagging. 
double letting your bridge sag with your legs are going. So I'll turn around this way to show you what my knees are doing. All right, and then we'll get started. So we'll do one set from this angle. Whenever you're ready, inhale, exhale. Push down through the feet. Get up on a nice strong bridge. Ski slope. Squeeze the bum, squeeze the tummy. Inhale, exhale, we're gonna open the knees. So you'll see the inside border of my feet lifting off, but the outside border of my feet still making contact. Inhale, exhale, the clothes. Squeeze those knees together. Inhale, exhale, to open. Inhale, exhale, the clothes. Squeeze the knees, keep your bridge tall. Inhale, exhale. Number three, inhale. Your exhale closes. Nearly there, two more to go. Squeeze the knees together, inhale. Strengthen your bridge. Exhale, number four. Inhale there, your exhale. Bringing you back center, squeeze the knees up tall, inhale. Exhale to open. Really feeling this in the bum. Inhale, exhale. Squeeze the knees, bring the knees back center, inhale, fix your bridge, get it up tall, and the next exhale, gently lower and down out of your bridge, until you're back center again. Two more sets of those to do, hey, hey, okay, so now you've got it, whenever you're ready, let's go in for our second set, fix the shoulder blades back, inhale, exhale, tuck pelvis towards you, sink down through the feet, get yourself up. In a nice tall bridge. Inhale. Exhale. Let's go for our legs. Open. Inhale. Exhale to close. Squeeze the knees together. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Close. Let's open. Inhale. And close. Squeeze the knees together. Two more to go. Fix your bridge. Inhale. Exhale. Out fall the knees. Inhale, exhale, closes. Get that super big squeeze. If you're crushing something in between your knees, open and out for the last one. Fix your bridge, really good. Inhale, exhale, the close. Squeeze the knees together. Bring the knees back center. Fix your bridge up tall. Inhale, exhale. Lower and back down. Hug your knees up towards your chest. We're going to win for our last set. That's really, really good. Oh. Feel the stretch in the lower back into the bum. Whew, last one. This is tough, isn't it? You can take some of the simplest um, body weighted moves. If you just add a little element into it, it makes it so much more difficult. So we really can cope without weights. I know anybody, um, I know I have a few people watching that are big into their strength training and compete in that. And that's, you know. If you do have access to weights at home, that's brilliant, but there's hope for everybody out there that you can, of course, still exercise even if you don't have weights. It trains a slightly different element to our training, so with our muscles we have muscular power, strength, uh, speed and endurance. So this is a little bit more about endurance and muscular control and mobility massively is what Pilates is about as well. So you need all of that grounding to progress in strength and power as well, which is brilliant. Last set. Arms down by your side, set the shoulder blades back, decrease that space between the ribs and the pelvis. Inhale, exhale, tuck the pelvis towards you. Headlights are shining up towards your eyes, it's a huge squeeze of the bum. Inhale, exhale, drop the knees out, inhale. Your exhale, squeeze the knees together, inhale. Knees falling apart. And squeeze them together. Last few. Doing really good. Squeeze the knees together. Inhale. Exhale to fall apart. Squeeze together when you're up there. Last one. Inhale. Exhale. Keep your bridge strong. Bring the knees back together. Squeeze them together. Bring them to neutral. Fix your bridge. Inhale. Exhale. Lower and back down. Oh my goodness, really, really good, guys. Sit yourselves up and pop your shoes on for me now. It's not going to be a shocking amount of weight. And if you are doing these and you're finding them a little bit more difficult than usual, please take your shoes off. Um, you know, modify your exercise so that you can keep going rather than having to lie and wait and wait and wait for the next exercise to come. Just make it easier, you know. So shoes are on for a little bit of added weight. We're gonna come down into that side lying posture so you can go with your head cushion here in between 
the ear and the shoulder. Or like I say, some people like to prop themselves up on their elbow. I'm going to go for my head cushion today. Let's fix that tummy posture. So I pull in of the belly button in towards the spine. A little bit slightly bit. And the lift up and away of the tummy muscles as if I was going to put a wee silk scarf in underneath where your belly button is. So for this one, your bottom leg's bent, top leg is straight. And we're going to go in for our side kicks here. So I'm staying within the plane of my body. Nope, make sure you can see me. Toes are turned up. We inhale. Hands come down your hip right in front of you. Exhale. Direct side lift. Hip abduction. And we're never coming all the way down um, to rest our leg down completely. We just, this is our start position here. Okay, whenever we're ready, inhale. Exhale, takes you up. Your inhale takes you back down. Exhale. Nice and slow. Don't jackknife the, the leg up. It's like windscreen wipers on your car. That's it, up and down. My hand's just here for dramatic effect to make it look like I am very coordinated. <laughs> Good. You can have your hand up like this if you want. You know, it does make it that little bit difficult, of course, because you're taking away a base of support. Ooh, should be starting to feel this a little bit in glute medius and the side of the hip. Have a spy down at yourself and make sure that you're keeping that foot nicely in line with your body, that your leg's not out here in front of you. It's dead slap in line with your body. Lifting up. Don't dump into the silk scarf through here. The tummy's nice and tight throughout. Last one. Lift up. We're going to pulse for five, four, three, two, one. And lower back down. Bend the knee up. Take a rest. Inhale. Exhale, toe pointed this time, we're coming back into that start position. Once you imagine there's a pencil coming out of your big toe, we're going to draw circles on that back wall. Inhale. And on your exhale, we're going to go for football sized circles on the wall. Change direction. Rugby ball. So oval. Your rugby ball can be lying whatever direction you want. Keep tight at the tummy here to allow this. Change direction. Tennis ball sized. <sighs> really feeling this. Change direction one last time and it's just a grip. Tiny, tiny movements. Inhale. Exhale to lower back down. Oh my goodness, that was absolutely brilliant. Okay, from here, sit yourself up. And the sitting shoes are still on. Bring your head cushion down to the opposite side because we're going to be going down there soon. Sit yourself up nice and tall. Pull your toes up like so. See how dirty the bottom of my shoes are? Should be cleaning more. Inhale. And on your exhale, round your spine forward, so sliding your hands down your legs to come down and touch your toes or wherever it is that you are. Some folk might only be at their knees, their shins, their ankles. And bring your head down towards your legs. Get that maximal stretch in the back body. Inhale. On your exhale, gently peel yourself back up. If you want a little bit of support, you can pop your hands down by your side for this to push down through your sides. Otherwise, you can hover your hands up. We're going to go in for leg lifts. Knee straight, toe face in the ceiling. Inhale. Your exhale, it's just a lift. But don't let your upper body tip back too much. It's sat up nice and tall. Shoulders right the way up on top of hips. Whenever we're ready, inhale. And your exhale, lifts the left leg. Right leg, good. Keep your breathing going. You'll really feel this in the thighs. Up nice and tall. Two more to go on each leg. How high can you lift? But like I say, don't let anything happen. Your upper body posture. Upper body posture has to be upright. It's tough with the shoes on. Inhale. And on your exhale, let's come down onto the opposite side. To do your other leg with those hip circles. Get your posture set up first. Pull in of the tummy button. That lift away from the mat as if I'm going to scoot something under there. And the bottom leg slightly. And we're coming up. Toe flexed up towards us into that starting position. Inhale here. So your hand can be there in front of you or on your hip, whatever, whatever you want to do for balance. Inhale. Your exhale. Hip flexion. But again, like I say, don't let it do anything. 
to your ground and core posture as you lift up and down. As always, keep the knees straight. You are going to find a difference between each hip. I know I always do. Lift on your exhale, your inhale takes you back down. Exhale to lift. Inhale to lower. Exhale to lift. Inhale to lower. Last few. Good. Almost there. Almost there. Two more to go. Lift. Lower down. Last one. Exhale. Inhale. On your exhale, let's pulse. Pulse five times. Good. Four, three, two, one. Lower back down. Whoa. Like I said, this is far too hard with the shoes on. Take the shoes off, believe it or not. Shoes, the, the weight of the shoes do, do make a difference. And in time, of course, you can get arm widths um, and uh, ankle widths that strap around. But I'm just trying to, just trying to use the old imagination. Everybody's got a pair of shoes. <clears throat> All right. Inhale. And on this exhale, we're going to come back up into that starting position again. Toe pointed this time. Big toe. There's a pencil coming out of it. We're going to draw circles on that bottom wall. Football size circles to begin with. Oh, ground down through that bottom leg to give you stability. Tight at the tummy. Change direction. Rugby balls. Woo, feel this working. On the side of the old hip there, that glute medius. Change direction. Beach ball. Doing really good. Almost there. Change direction again. Grip. 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 Tiny. For three, two, one. Inhale. Exhale. Woo. Lower back down. Oh my goodness. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Woo. Right. Now we're going to take our shoes off. Pop your head cushion off to the side. Oh my gosh. The sides of the hips there. Take your shoes off for me. Now, we're really feeling this in the old hips. Gonna come in for our abdominal work next. Alrighty, so make sure you can see me here. Absolutely great. So we're taking the head cushion away because we're gonna be using the power of the neck muscles that we've been training to pick our own heads up. So we don't need to worry about head cushion because we're gonna be able to support our heads ourselves. So let's get started um, by taking you into our start position first, which is going to be double tabletop prep. Um, with a little bit of abdo prep as well. That's going to be our start position. So down here is not going to be our start position, unfortunately. If only we're here to work. Okay, so double tabletop prep looks like this. We inhale. On your exhale, pick your right leg up. It's a tabletop prep. So that's again, knees directly over hip. Shins bent at a 90 degree angle there. Inhale. And on the exhale, let's pick the left leg up. Double tabletop prep. So we're like two legs of a chair and our shins at the top of our chair. Gonna come up into abdo prep as well, which we've been training. Inhale. And on your exhale, we sit the body up. Chins tucked into the chest. We're looking just up over the knees. Arms are floated up by our side like so. This exercise is the single and double leg stretch. So we'll start off with a single leg stretch first and then anybody that's really wanting a task will go in for a double leg stretch. Inhale. On your exhale, keep your left leg where it is. Single leg stretch. Inhale. Exhale. Taking you back up. If it's too much to hold your head up here, pop your hands behind your head to sit yourself right the way up as well. Inhale. Exhale. Straighten out the left leg. Keep the right where it is. Inhale. Exhale to come back. Inhale. Exhale to stretch. Inhale to come back. Exhale to lower the left. Inhale to come back. You got it. Off we go. This is too difficult for anybody. You can be up here and just doing your wee leg taps and definitely support the weight of your head if this is too difficult for you as well. Last few. Keep it going. Keep your abdo prep up high. So you're keeping those shoulder blades lifted right the way up. Anybody that's wanting double leg stretch, you touch the big toes together and double leg. Go the two legs at the same time. Inhale, exhale, like a dish. Inhale to come back. This is too much for anybody. You really have to make sure that your lower back is pressed hard into the mat. 
So otherwise, if this is too difficult for anybody, keep going with the single legged. Almost there, last few. Your exhale drives the movement. Inhale takes you back. Last one. And pull towards you. Ooh, rest your head back. Switch everything off. Pull those legs up towards you. That was absolutely brilliant. Really, really, really good. How are y'all doing in quarantine? <laughs> hope you're finding lots of things to keep yourselves entertained with. And of course, I hope everybody's well. Scooch those knees closer towards your chest. Lower one leg down at a time. Stay to use where you are. I'm maybe just going to change my angle here to show you what I'm going to be doing with my, my legs first. Already. So for this next, next exercise is hip twist. So we'll be back up in that start position again. And we're going to be lowering. So it's almost like we're doing our sideline clams, but we're doing them on our back this time. And then to make it more difficult, you can come out with a straight leg. Now you can see the most important thing here is to make sure that this bent leg is staying steady and my core tummy muscles are staying steady while I lower out with the opposite leg. This is going to be the most important thing. Are you almost finished resting? I'm going to come a little bit closer. So make sure there's nothing you're going to be able to need to, be able to open your hips out here. So make sure there's a wall beside me. I want to have a collision with the wall. So make sure there's, um, you've got plenty of space either side you for this next, next one. Tell my muscles are feeling it. Arms down by your side. Let's inhale. On your exhale, right leg falls up into tabletop. And then the left follows suit. You can have your hands behind your head if you want as well, if you want to watch yourself, because I know a lot of us like to actually um, see what our legs are doing. So have your chin tucked in towards your neck and the hands supporting the head so you can see. Inhale. And on your exhale, keep your left leg where it is. We're going to fall out with the right hip and close back in. Hip openings. So this is lovely mobility work for the hip. But like I say, concentration right now, I want it to be on your left leg. What's your left leg doing? I want it as steady as a rock, not tossing about the place. And the left side of your lower back shouldn't be lifting off here either. So it's real grounding down through the core to keep you steady here. Your exhale, folding the leg out, inhale, brings you back. Let's swap legs, left leg, inhale, exhale. Out falls the left leg, but this one's staying steady. Your right one's staying nice and steady as the left falls in and out. Keep it going. Falling out, feeling the stretch in the inside of the leg. Your exhale, falling out. Back to the right leg. Do you want to come straight this time? Be a little bit more of a balance challenge to keep this one straight. Whoo! Good, keep it going. Exhale. Drops the leg out. But what's the left leg doing? Drop the right leg out. Inhale to come back. Bend at the right, straighten the left, and out we go with the left. Good. Stability, stability, stability. Trying to keep that right leg right now as steady as we possibly can. Last one. And your knee can still be bent here. If the straight leg's too difficult, bring both legs towards you and again, stretch. Oh my gosh. Really, really good on the abs there. Really, really good. Oh my gosh. Squeezing towards you. Bring one leg down at a time. Bring the arms up in front. Straighten out your legs. Let your back arch up. Give your tummy a wee stretch off. Breathing deep. Really good. Just taking time to be. 
<laughs> Inhale, fill those lungs up. Exhale. Okay, from here, I want you to turn yourselves onto your side and we're going to come into all fours into our plank position. So make sure you don't have to see me here. So we're up on all fours. Going to be able to vary between plank level one or level two, depending on what you're feeling today. So hands are about shoulder width apart, that back's nice and flat. So we've got the two extremes, the cat and the camel. Your back's nice and flat in between. Let you have a look at my neck posture. So I'm looking right down in between my two hands to tuck my chin up towards my chest here. Feet are turned up. And my feet are also about hip width apart here. So if we're doing plank level one, it looks like this. We inhale. On our exhale, we push up into the plank. Now we're going to try to train the endurance of the plank up here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a step out to the side to tap with the left leg, back centre. Tap out to the right, back centre. Straighten out with the left to tap, back centre. And out with the right to tap, back centre. And then we lower back down. If you're plank level two, of course, this is our start position. We step out to the left, back centre, out to the right, back centre. Pushing down through the left foot, we float the left leg up, back down. Float the right leg up, back down. And then come down onto the knees for a rest. I already did a couple of sets of these. So pick which plank you want to do. But that is plank level one, or plank level two. I'll be doing plank level two to test myself, but I will vary it between the two so that you can remember what you are doing. All right, set the shoulder blades back, tuck the chin up towards the chest, and off we go, inhale. Exhale, come up into your plank. Step to the left, step back center. Step to the right, step back center. Float up with the left leg, back down center. Float up with the right leg, back down center, and rest down. Inhale, exhale the plank. Step out to the left, back center. Step out to the right, back center. Float up with the left, back center. Float up with the right, back center. Touch back down, a few more to go. Really, really good, inhale, exhale. Plank. Off we go. Step out to the left. Back centre. Step out to the right. Back centre. Lift up with the left. Back centre. Lift up with the right. Back centre. Lower back down. Last one. Inhale. Exhale. Up we come to plank. Make it a nice strong plank. Inhale. Exhale. Step left. Back center, step right, back center, inhale, exhale, lift with the left, back down, inhale, lift with the right, back down, inhale, exhale, woohoo, sit back into shell stretch, oh, bum comes down onto the heels, arms are stretched out in front of you and forehead comes down towards the mat, stretch off. This is amazing. Y'all are amazing. Woo! Okay, we're gonna come in for swimming next. So this is another belly exercise. Gonna get our head cushion. Our forehead's gonna be resting on our head cushion so that our little nose and mouth has room to breathe. So set yourself up. Your head cushion, your pillow, whatever it is that you're using. It's just your forehead. Should be a little bit of space. Fold your face. Now, what I want you to do with this one, so this is basically going to be swimming, so we're moving our legs as if we're actually swimming. So it's quite similar to what we've done in the plank there, where we're hovering to lift the leg up and down. The knee's going to be straight, now the toe's going to be pointed as well. But something I want you to do for me first before we get started, take both of your hands and pop them right on your hip bones, like we do sometimes when we're standing or when we're doing our bridge. Now, I want you to make sure that while you're lifting the legs, See where your hands are on your hip bones? Use the power of your bum muscles to squeeze. I want you to squish your hands with those hip bones. So you'll feel it's a real tightening of the bum and the tummy, as always. 
to plant the hips into the mat. Otherwise, if you don't and there's a gap there, it means that when you're lifting the legs, there's going to be a big dump into your lower back as you lift. So I want your tummy muscles and your bum muscles to be grounding you here. Your, your belly button is basically squeezed into the mat to allow the leg to lift with control. Might not lift that high. It's going to work these bum muscles and hamstring muscles, disassociating them from the lower back here, which is how so many of us cause lower back injuries. So I'll shut up now and we'll get the exercise done. Foreheads on your head cushion. Your arms are down by your side or your arms can be up. You can even pop your forehead onto your hands up here. Just so that you're not grounding down through the hands too much to help you lift as well. Before we get started, let's switch on those tummy muscles. Squeeze your two hip bones, plant them hard into the mat. Toes pointed, knees straight, inhale. As we exhale, we're going to float the left leg up just as high as we can before we lose that contact of the hip bone. Exhale the lower, inhale. Exhale is going to lift the right leg, knee straight, toe pointed. You should be feeling this a little bit in your lower back, but nothing major. If you're doing the squeeze of the hip bones in, lift at the right, lower back down. Lift at the left, lower back down. A few more. Lift at the right, lower back down. Keep the hip bones squeezed into the mat, lift at the left. Lower back down, lift at the right, lower back down, keep bum and tum squeezed, and lower back down. Excellent, so that's a simple one, but we're soon going to progress on to a little bit of proper swimming in time, but that just gets you warmed up, lets you know what's coming. Okay, we're going to stretch off the quads next, so you can stay where you are, you can have your head turned off to the side like me with your left hand. Reach back for your left ankle. Now, if you can't reach your leg like that whatsoever, something that's good to do that I do with Folk and Clinic is if you get a towel and scooch it round the back like a lasso, <laughs> you can grab and pull it towards you because it's very important that we're practicing flexibility for the quadriceps muscles, which is down the front of the thigh here, and our hip flexors because we do work these muscles quite a lot uh, in day-to-day -day life, but in Pilates too. Pull the heel as far towards your bum as you can and do your squeeze of your bum and your tummy here too to get that extra bit of a stretch so really sink your hip bone down into the mat or the rug or the floor beneath you inhale exhale this time i'm going to turn my head off to my right because i'm going to stretch my right my right hand goes back bend that heel up towards my bum ah, stretching the heel towards the bum here and again i'm going to squeeze my bum and my tummy to make sure the front of my hip bone is squeezed into the mat and that will intensify the stretch for me. Inhale and exhale and we lower back down. Turn over onto your back, go with your right leg first, right leg bend the knee, take it all the way up to the chest, the left leg is out long. With the left leg, straighten the knee and pull up the toes. Really sink the back of your left knee into the mat as you pull the right knee up towards you. Inhale. Now on your exhale, take your left hand to the outside of your right leg like so. Right hand's up beside you. And I'm going to pull my right knee towards the left. So it comes all the way off and I'm looking the opposite direction. So I'm looking down towards my right hand and I've pulled that right knee. Oh, it's lovely. You'll get a great big stretch all up the back body, down the IT band in the lower back. Inhale. Exhale, come back center. Send that leg out long and bring your left leg up towards you. Pulling the knee towards the chest. With the right leg, straighten the knee Back of the knee down into the mat and pull your toe up. Edge the left knee closer towards you. Breathing deep, set the shoulders down. Take your right hand to the outside of your left leg. This left hand is out beside you now. And then we pull the left leg over. And now I'm looking back towards my left arm. 
Oh, really, really good. We're in for our cool down stretches. This feels glorious. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Back centre again. Bring your arms out into cactus pose, like so. So your shoulders are bent up. You'll be able to see on my right shoulder here. Shoulders are bent to 90 degrees and your elbows are bent to 90 degrees. So, you basically look like this. And we're gonna practice shoulder internal and external rotation. So, cactus arms, as if you're caught by the police out in quarantine, breeze. <laughs> Don't be doing that. Whatever you are doing. I'm gonna go out for emergencies, necessities only. Bent up and check this pose. Inhale here. Now, if you can't get your arms all the way back here, that's okay. Um, I know some folk out there that might be watching this have tight shoulders, so just come to where you are and you're trying to actively work into that. And we're gonna rotate into internal rotation. Just back and forth. Just a little bit of mobility sequence for the rotation of the shoulders. But you're keeping your shoulder joints set at that 90 degrees to allow the rotation to happen, a hinge, a pivot about the elbow. Lovely. When you're in that internal rotation, really press the palms in to the earth here. And same when you're back here, press the back of the hands hard into the floor beneath you, inhale. Your exhale rotates. When your palms make contact here, if they can make contact, Press the hands. Oh, really feel that in the shoulders. That's really good. Inhale and your exhale. Takes you back up to start again. Press the hands in. Reach up towards the ceiling. Pull the shoulder blades away. Set the shoulder blades back. And again, inhale. Your exhale, reach. Up towards the ceiling, inhale. Squeezes the shoulder blades back. And again, next exhale. Reach in for the ceiling and lower the hands back down. Well done, another session done. Lovely, lovely cool down there, guys. Um, that was great as always. So, um, next video will be out again in two days' time. So, like I said, they're out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. This is the third video. So, if you've missed any of um, my other videos, my first and second one, um, tune in. And like I say, if there's anything you want to see, I'm thinking that once a week I'll put in a little booster session as well. So intense core, um, things like I might just do a full video on stretching and cool down. For instance, I went for a small jog last night and definitely feeling it in my lower limb muscles today. So if you're taking up running, taking up cycling or taking up something new and you're finding your muscles are quite achy and sore, um, make sure you're eating and drinking plenty and... Um, yeah, maybe I'll put up a little stretch and mobility video for you guys or things. If any of you have foam rollers and things at home, I can do a foam roller session as well. So keep your eyes peeled for things like that, like we booster extra sessions. Keep moving in the meantime. Look after yourselves and I'll see you soon. Take care, guys.